Hi everybody, welcome to USA Hockey Arena in Plymouth, Michigan. My guest is the assistant coach for the NTDP UATs, the 2006 date of birth group, Matt Gilroy. And Matt, thanks for your time. Krebs, thanks for having me. I know you're busy. We'll try to get you in and out of here as quickly as we can. But uh, you, you've been with this team now for a whole year and uh, maybe two months now at, at the time we're uh, doing this interview. How do you like your team uh, in, the, in their U18 year right now? Yeah, it's exciting. We had a pretty good start to the beginning of the year, and now we're coming into college games, so that'll be a good test for the boys. What attracts you to the college game? I know you played at Boston University, but uh, you, you see it now as a coach, coaching these guys that are going to be in college hockey pretty soon. What's the attraction for you? I think it's just a unique experience for the boys. You know, they come in last year, they play USHL as young kids, and now we're going to play college games there's no other place in the world where you get that opportunity to get a almost a full year of college hockey and before you get to college hockey so it's a good test for the kids and it's a big part of their development I want to talk about some individual players obviously Cole Eisenman's lighting it up uh, you get to see this guy every day both on and off the ice we know he's a premier goal scorer but what makes him different from everybody else uh, yeah obviously we see all the goals but I've been around hockey for a long time. I've never seen someone so obsessed with scoring goals. It's uh, pretty unique to watch from an everyday, from scoring goals in practice to goals in games. And I mean, Cole loves scoring goals and that's what he does. And it's, yeah, definitely special to watch every day and we'll see how many he can get. You know, Matt, uh, Cole Eisenman is one kind of offensive driver, but you have another one in James Haggins and, uh, you know, what makes him the driver that he is? Yeah, two different style players for sure. The Hags is more of a playmaker out there and Coles is a scorer, but you know, it's kind of special that we have them both together and we can, we haven't played them in games yet together. We always know that's a possibility, but have them on the power play and the way they uh, interact with each other on the ice and connect for some goals. It's a, it's a nice thing to have when you're a coach for sure. I know you run the defense and I know you think highly of Logan Hensler, uh, who earlier this, this year was a USHL Defenseman of the Week. Uh, what do you like about Logan Hensler? Yeah, I mean, Henny's done a great job. I think last year he started a little slow, and then towards the end of the year he started to find his game. He had a great summer training and getting ready in Minnesota, and he came prepared this year, and I hopefully he continues what he's been doing. It's been fun to watch. I, uh, last year I called E.J. Emery a, a steady performer, steady as she goes. Would that be accurate with E.J. Emery? Yeah, E.J.'s been great. Uh, it's, he's pretty special at a young age, how he understands defense and his compete level. Uh, defense is a hard thing to learn, especially for kids, and he's done a great job, and he keeps getting better each and every day. So we've been talking about the present U18 players. I want to get into your uh, background a little bit. It's kind of funny. Because uh, doing a little research, your dad was a, a co collegiate player for St. John's, drafted by the Philadelphia 76ers, but you and your brother Kevin went to hockey. How did that work out? Yeah, just randomly my mom said when I came home from kindergarten, told her I wanted to be a hockey player, and then uh, she brought us down to the local rink. And funny story, my mom didn't know anything, and I had to learn. I learned. I had to do learn to skate and figure skates for a few weeks until I stuck with it before they bought me hockey skates. So I think I became a good skater because I learned my edges and stuff on figure skates and I thank my mom for that. There you go. Now you went to Boston University. Um, again, looking at uh, your past, uh, you guys were at one time called the Cardiac Kids. What was that all about? Yeah, I think, I don't know, that might have been from our senior year how we, uh, the way, the style we played, but. BU was special. My route to college was a lot different than these kids. It took me a little bit longer to develop, but uh, Jack Parker gave me a chance as a walk-on many years ago, and it all worked out for the best. You know, it's funny, too, because as a walk-on, you probably don't get many uh, favors when you join a team, but uh, you asked for the number 97. What was that all about? Yeah, uh, I'm from a big Irish Catholic family, and I had two brothers that passed, and one of my brothers, Timmy, when we showed up, for our first, I think it was Mites. We only knew Wayne Gretzky's number. So we, of course, we were running late because there's so many of us and 99 was already picked. So I picked 98 and he picked 97. And then Timmy passed away when I was about eight years old. Okay. 
and I promised my mom I'd always wear his number and take it to places Timmy would have taken it. So and you took it to the NHL and every place else. Yeah, it was special. You know, every time I walked into a locker room, one of the first things I did was look at that number every night and just yeah, it was just a special moment for me and my family for sure. Matt, we've talked about you winning the uh, Hobie Baker Award in 2009, and you've, you said that the uh, award back then didn't have quite the, uh, the media attention then as it does now. Is that correct? Yeah, it's different. I think social media was just starting kind of when I was getting out of school. I think we had Facebook and we didn't have Instagram and Twitter and stuff, but it's been great to see. And uh, yeah, it was a, I think I won that award because I was on the best team in college hockey. We had a really special team winning the national championship and then I got rewarded at the end of that too. But uh, I think if I'm not on Boston University, there's no chance I win that. So it's interesting. Uh you came on as a walk-on with Boston University. You were not drafted in the NHL, but you signed as a free agent with the Rangers. Uh, what was that experience like? Yeah, it was pretty special. You know, I was kind of older and I was able to get a different kind of contract because of my age, but coming from New York, being able to sign with the New York Rangers and go back home and play in Madison Square Garden was definitely special for me and my family. So you, you played in the NHL, you played uh, internationally, and uh, what prompted you to get back into coaching? Yeah, I just think anytime you get to wear the jersey, my opportunity happened later in life with the <clears> World <throat> Championship and a few Deutschland Cups in the Olympics, but these kids, every time you put that jersey on, special. And uh, I was retired in LA and doing nothing, and I missed hockey and wanted to be back into it, and this opportunity came up. so. I jumped on it. What do you like about coaching this age group? Well, this specific team, it's yeah. special to be here for sure. Um, it's the kids want to be here. No one's paying for them. No one's mom's pushing them. Dad's pushing them. They're all here to get better every, each and every day. And being on the ice with them, video, just interacting with them, it's a lot of fun each and every day. So you've seen improvement in this team between last year and this year, both on and off the ice. Yeah, I think. As coaches here, we're around them so much, we get to see them grow as young men. And that's the special part about here. You know, they leave home and they have to live with billets. They have to learn laundry and cooking and organization. And you see those kids come in into the start of it struggling and now they're up and running and now they're becoming young men and they're a lot of fun to be around. One last thing, we'll let you go. Uh, in case people don't know, you're married to Jenny Taft, who's a Fox a sports reporter. She does uh, a lot of sideline reporting for college football and the NFL. Uh, you've uh, experienced the Deion Sanders uh, phenomenon uh, recently. What's that like uh, with Coach Prime? Yeah, my wife's a lot cooler than I am. <laughs> so she gets to do a lot of cool events, World Cups and, and football dog shows. But yeah, a few weekends ago, I was able to see Coach Prime. And it's amazing what he does. And just to listen to him speak about his players and his the Boulder community is fun to watch and learn from each and every day. Matt, thanks for your time, and uh, we'll definitely talk again. Thanks, Krupper.